Hi, my name is Peter Wilder, and I'm an HVAC Drives Application Engineer at ABB. The following presentation is a discussion on how to troubleshoot a VFD or voltage fault. A little background about myself is that I have been working with and supporting customers who have variable frequency drives for over 15 years. And a routine call I may get from a customer is that, hey, Peter, my drive's tripped out on an over voltage fault. What do I do? How do I resolve this and get the drive up and running as quickly as possible? And unfortunately, there's no easy answer with the drives tripping out on an over voltage fault. And that's because the cause of the fault can come from two different sides of the drive. It can come from the line side of the drive or the load side of the drive. Some examples of what could be causing the drive to trip on the line side are an upstream utility event, maybe another parallel large load in the facility. You could have power factor correction caps or other harmonic filters, for example, in your facility causing the drive to trip out from the line side. It could also be tripping out from the load side. And this could be because the drive could be set up or programmed incorrectly for the application. You could have a mechanical problem with the application or the over voltage fault could be masking a different fault that's actually occurring. In this presentation, we're gonna discuss different scenarios that can cause an over voltage fault and provide some general guidance on solutions. The goal of this presentation is to teach you how to identify the cause of the over voltage fault and, and how to resolve the fault as quickly as possible. Now, I just mentioned that a line side or the motor side can cause an over voltage fault on the drive. Well, what does this mean? Here's the basic schematic of a six pulse drive. On the left here, we have the input line voltage to the drive. And in yellow are the input diodes that rectify the AC voltage to DC voltage. Now, the DC bus of the drive is represented in yellow with the plus and minus symbols respectively for the positive and negative side of the DC bus. If we were to take a basic meter, we could measure the DC bus voltage and the drive internally is always monitoring the DC bus voltage with its own internal voltage meter. Now, the load side or the motor side of the drive can also cause an over voltage fault and also input voltage to the drive's DC bus. And this is by the parallel flyback diodes highlighted in yellow to each of the six output IGBTs. Just as a side note, the negative side of the DC bus is not the same as earth ground. Now, in the previous slide, I mentioned two different types of voltage. AC voltage, which is the voltage from the utility, and the rectified DC bus voltage that's stored across the DC bus capacitors on the drive. What is the relationship between these two different types of voltages mathematically? Well, the relationship is to take the phase-to-phase -phase voltage and multiply it times the square root of 2, and that will give you your DC bus voltage. For example, if I take 480 volts phase-to-phase -phase times 1.414, which is the square root of 2, equals approximately 678 volts DC. Now, this this voltage is our idealized voltage that we would see using a multimeter if we measured across the DC bus or looked at the, on the drive's control panel, its internal measurement, if the drive is not running its motor. Now, when the VFD does run its motor under normal loading, the bus voltage will drop and you can see at times the bus voltage as low as 620 volts DC. This is not an issue for the drive. It's just something I want you to be aware of that if you see a voltage much lower than the nominal idealized voltage, you don't have a problem. Now, we are talking about overvoltage, so what is the maximum voltage that the VFD can handle across its DC bus before it trips out on a fault? Well, here on the left, you can see the different trip levels for the ABB 580 series, depending on if it's a 200 volt drive, a 400 volt drive, or a 600 volt drive. Now, the VFD is constantly monitoring the DC bus as fast as the processor in the drive can scan the bus level through its voltage monitor. And as soon as the drive sees the bus voltage exceed these values, the VFD instantly stops running the motor and trips out on a fault. We're first going to start off by discussing some scenarios where the line side of the drive is where the over voltage fault event is occurring from as the cause of the fault. When the line side of the drive is the cause of the fault, these events that cause it are usually very brief in time. Because they're very brief in time and they have a high magnitude, they're a term that's used to describe them is voltage spike. Image on the right. I have a oscilloscope capture of a voltage spike where I had 408 volts RMS on the input of a drive, and I engaged a capacitor that was in parallel, and that caused that rapid rise and spike in the voltage. Like I mentioned, a oscilloscope is the best tool to use to capture these events. If you have a multimeter, you're going to definitely want a good multimeter and have a peak voltage setting on there is your basic RMS setting will average out and you'll never see the voltage spike occurring. It'll be averaged out in a filter on the meter and you will never see it. The quick, easy bullet point of is the input side of the drive the cause of where my over voltage event is cut from is if the faults are occurring on multiple drives at site or they're occurring at the same time every day, this 99% of the time means the over voltage fault is occurring from the line side of the drive. Let's start our discussion on symptoms with we notice that the VFD is tripping out at about the same time every day. Or we could have multiple drives that are tripping out at the same time every day. If we have multiple VFDs that trip out at the same time every day, the only thing in common with those VFDs 
is the input line power. So it's very obvious in that scenario that the line side is the cause of the overvoltage trip on the VFD. Now, if we have a single drive tripping out at the same time every day, the VFD is, we still wanna to look to the line side as our cause most likely because the drive is not saying, hey, at nine o'clock in the morning, let's just trip out on overvoltage for the fun of it. So what are some causes or what could be the diagnosis of our cause of our trip? We could have the local utility, let's say down the road, switching on power factor correction caps that causes a transient to come down the line and hit the drive at about the same time every day. We maybe have another large piece of machinery that's turning on within your own facility. Maybe, for example, the chiller is turning on at the same time every day, and that causes the voltage disturbance within your building. Now, what are some solutions to this problem? Before I mention the solutions, I do want to note, ideally, you'd always say, let's prove that we see an input transient event on the input side of the drive. Let's look up, for example, a power analyzer on the input side to capture it. Sometimes you can have success doing this. Sometimes you don't have success, especially if it's a very fast transient event. A power analyzer may not capture it. So what are our solutions? Well, one option we could use is a three-phase AC reactor we install in front of the VFD input lugs. This will help suppress some transient events. Another that could be used is an SPD or TVSS, as it's called. Those acronyms stand for surge suppression device or transient voltage surge suppression. Those are the same type of device. They're just two different acronyms to represent the same thing thing. Those are generally hooked up in parallel to the drive, where an AC line reactor is hooked up in series to the drive. Downside of an AC line reactor is as the drive's horsepower increases, the size of the AC reactor increases. Generally, SPDs and, or TVSSs, those are going to be the same size device regardless of the horsepower of the VFD itself. Another option, if we don't want to purchase some additional hardware install in front of the drive, is we could just say, you know what, let's just set up the drive to have some over voltage auto restarts. We'll put maybe a time delay in there of like say 10 seconds and I can do without the VFD running for 10 seconds. So the drive trips out, the input voltage event clears, the drive waits 10 seconds and auto restarts. The next symptom is just a twist off of what we just previously discussed. Maybe the over voltage event on a VFD is not occurring at the same time every day, but it always seems to, you know, it's to correlate to some other event within your facility running or turning on. For example, you could have a large horsepower chiller or a stamp press turn on. Maybe you have a large regenerative load that's stopping and putting energy back onto the input utility power within your facility. Maybe the generator kicks on and whenever the generator kicks on, you notice another drive trip out on over voltage. Maybe you have elevators that are running in the morning or in the evening. And whenever the elevators run, the VFD trips out on over voltage. So it's not necessarily always exactly the same time every day, or it's always correlated to another load within your facility. So again, what are some solutions? As I just mentioned, we could look at an AC line reactor, putting installing that in front of the drive, or maybe some sort of transient voltage surge suppression device, or maybe a combination of both. You could also look at the application and the electrical setup that's causing the issue. Maybe instead of trying to correct the VFD itself that's tripping out on over voltage, maybe there's some adjustments to the actual device that's causing the voltage event within your facility that could be adjusted. Another possibility, as I've mentioned before, set up some auto restarts on the VFD itself that is tripping out on over voltage. The next symptom I'd like to discuss with you is a classic one out there in the industry, and it's when the VFD is packaged with a passive harmonic input filter. This filter is also sometimes called a trap filter in the industry, and it's an LCL style filter, and the C in the LCL stands for capacitors. And the issue is when the VFD is running and as the load on the motor increases, many times there's a contactor in this package, and when the contactor engages, there's a rapid increase in voltage, a voltage spike, that hits the VFD. So sometimes when these capacitors engage, the drive sees this voltage spike and trips out on a fault. Sometimes the VFD doesn't trip on a fault right away when the contactor engages, but what can happen is as the VFD is running the motor and the load increases, you can get what's called a resonance effect between the drive's internal DC bus capacitors and the LCL or harmonic filter capacitors. And as this resonance occurs, it can increase and eventually the voltage inside the drive on the DC bus builds and builds and builds, and then eventually, boom, the drive trips out on an overvoltage fault. So how do you resolve this problem if this is the cause of your overvoltage fault in the drive? Well, at a very high level, possibly you can make some adjustments to at when the filter pulls in its capacitors. And at another high level, you can also adjust some programming in the drive, maybe related to the motor control. Detailed solutions on this can get kind of complex, so I definitely recommend reach out to your local ABB VFD specialist, and they can assist you with how to adjust the tuning on your drive or the tuning in the filter if this is the cause of your problem.
The last symptom I'd like to discuss with you related to the line side of the drive in an overvulture fault has to do with the use of power factor correction capacitors still within your facility, even though now you have VFDs installed. With four variable frequency drives, when motors ran across the line, they created a lagging power factor. To counteract this, customers would install power factor correction caps to bring the power factor back to unity within their facility. What can happen is when these capacitors are either turning on or off due to building load, or even if they're just on all the time, they can create oscillations on the drive's DC bus, just like the passive harmonic filter I discussed earlier, or if they're engaging, they can create power spikes within the facility that will trip the drive out on an overvoltage fault. Now, the benefit of a variable frequency drive is it creates near unity or about 0.98 displacement power factor across its entire speed range. Instead of a major lagging power factor, you have already near unity just by installing a variable frequency drive. The solution actually is when you have power factor correction caps and VFDs is remove the power factor correction caps and throw them in the trash. Uh, or recycle them. Um, but yeah, they are not needed to be used with a variable frequency drive to correct power factor within your facility. Now in the previous few slides, I was just talking about how the DC bus voltage can rise and cause the VFD to trip out on an over voltage fault from a line side event or the input side of the VFD. We're now gonna transition and talk about how the DC bus voltage can rise from an event on the output side or motor side of the VFD. Highlighted again here in yellow, I have the flyback dials that are in parallel to each of the IGBTs. This allows the voltage to come back from the motor into the VFD and get onto the DC bus. We're gonna start with the most common symptom that's covered in all VFD manuals, when you have an over voltage trip on the VFD. And that relates to the decel time. So the symptom is when the VFD is decelerating the motor from a higher speed to a lower speed, or maybe you know you remove the run command and the VFD now is ramping the motor to a complete stop, the drive trips out on over voltage. Now what's going on? Well, what's happening is in a motor, when you apply a lower voltage to the motor for a lower frequency speed, then what the motor's actually rotating at, the motor actually turns into a generator. This voltage goes back up to the VFD through the flyback diodes and boosts the DC bus. Now, if the motor uh, load has a high enough inertia, let's say for a large diameter fan, maybe like a six foot diameter fan, there's a lot of inertia there. So the ability of the VFD to slow that a high inertia load down very quickly and uh, is not possible. So what happens is the motor again turns into a generator, boosts the DC bus, and eventually the drive trips out. Now, the simple solution in this scenario is just to increase the deceleration time in the parameter in the VFD. Another solution would be if you must have a very short decel time is to look at either maybe some braking resistors to apply those to the drive or possibly even looking at an active front end style drive where you can put the energy back onto the line grid if you need a very, very short decel time, which is required in some applications. The next symptom we're going to discuss has to deal with when the VFD has a constantly elevated DC bus voltage above its nominal or idealized DC bus voltage. Again, the nominal or idealized bus voltage is what is my phase-to-phase -phase voltage times the square root of two when the VFD is not running. So if I'm constantly elevated above that, there's something causing the motor to turn into a generator in this scenario to pump energy back into the VFD. Common applications for this have to do with supply return fans or maybe a downhill conveyor, for example. In the supply return fan application, many times the supply fan is about double the size of the return fan in horsepower. And if the air handler is not balanced correctly, the supply fan can be causing an overhauling or causing a pressure differential to want to pull air across the return fan faster than the return fan VFD is attempting to run the motor at. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, when a motor is spinning faster than the applied voltage and frequency to that motor, the motor turns into a generator. So this energy just gets pumped up to the VFD and pumps up the DC bus. And if it's great enough, eventually the VFD DC bus level could rise to the trip level. Now, the other example I've stated, a downhill conveyor. Here we have gravity. So we have, let's say, a load of dirt or rocks on a conveyor going downhill. Gravity is also pulling this conveyor downhill. So the motor is attempting to prevent the conveyor from running out of control downhill too fast. But again, the motor is potentially rotating a little bit faster because the gravity is pulling it down, then the VFD is attempting to run it at. So again, the motor is turning into a generator. Now, what are the solutions for these two examples? Well, if it's an HVAC supply return fan system, the solution is really just to balance the HVAC system. If you balance it correctly, you won't have the supply fan, for example, overhauling the return fan. For a downhill conveyor application, in this scenario, you may actually have to look at, for example, dynamic brake resistors is one option or look at a regenerative VFD or an active front end drive where you can take the energy from the motor 
when it gets onto the DC bus and actually put it back onto the AC line with a regenerative style drive. The reason for a downhill conveyor, you may want to look at that is because that is constantly happening. There's not a whole lot you can do application-wise to rebalance a system like you can in an HVAC. Thus, it's better just to put the energy back onto the line or with dynamic braking, you're dissipating it via excess energy on the DC bus in the form of heat through resistors. Let's say we observe that the VFD seems to be tripping out on a new run command or maybe when a safety is being reset. What could be going on? Well, we could have the wrong start method set up in the drive. If, for example, you have a fan application and the fan is still windmilling before the run command is given, that can cause an OV trip on the VFD. A rare scenario, but I have seen it before, is a short phase to ground between the drive and the motor. Instead of getting an earth fault or an earth leakage fault in the VFD, which is a time delay based fault, we are instead of getting an over voltage fault in the VFD because that's an instantaneous fault, as I mentioned earlier in this presentation. And in industrial applications where you have encoder feedback, encoder mounted on the back of the motor, sending pulse data back up to the VFD, if we are have issues in the pulse data getting back to the drive properly, the VFD could be reacting and how it fires the output IGBTs, which can cause an overvoltage trip in the VFD. So what are solutions for each of these events? Well, first, let's make sure we have the right start method set up for the application. If the load could be rotating after the run command has been removed, we want to make sure we have the VFD set up for a flying start or automatic start, which can catch a rotating load. If we think we may have a wiring issue, a short phase to ground between the drive and the motor, Let's measure the motor wiring and the motor itself to check for this fault. And if we have an encoder mounted on the back of the motor, check the encoder and the encoder wiring and making sure all the pulses are getting back up to the VFD correctly. Now, the type of application or process the VFD is running could also cause the VFD to trip out an overvoltage fault. A lot of these are industrial processor application. And these applications specifically have a dynamic or changing load where the VFD is loaded and unloaded, which then causes the motor to potentially spin faster than the VFD is trying to run it at when the load is all of a sudden suddenly removed. Two scenarios I've seen this happen are with a punch press and a saw blade cutting a log, for example. In the punch press example, the VFD is running a large flywheel and a clutch is engaging and disengaging against the flywheel to cause the punch press to operate and not operate. And when the clutch is engaging and disengaging, it's loading and unloading the flywheel Thus, it can cause the VFD to trip out on an overvoltage fault. And in the saw blade cutting app example, the saw blade is cutting through a log, and also when the blade breaks through the end of the log, all of a sudden all the load on the blade is gone, but all that torque that had been built up by the VFD and the motor is still there. So all of a sudden this large diameter blade will want to overspin and run faster than the VFD is attempting to run it at, and thus the motor turns into a generator and the VFD trips on an overvoltage fault. So what are solutions for like these two examples I provided? In other situations you may find yourself in, one is you may be able to adjust some motor control parameters in the VFD. That would be a free solution that will help solve your problem. Other options are dynamic brake resistors or regenerative drive. For the punch press, depending on how high the duty cycle is, how often the overvoltage spikes are occurring back up to the drive, depending on the application, you may want to look at a regenerative drive over dynamic braking resistors. If your duty cycle is low, like in the saw blade cutting example, that would be a low duty cycle. Simple dynamic brake resistor, if parameter adjustments don't fix the problem, would be the solution to go with there. The last set of symptoms that could cause the VFD to trip on an overvoltage fault could be the line or the load side of the drive. This is my gotcha slide where I a couple other scenarios I've experienced, but I didn't cover them in previous slides. We still could have a voltage spike. It's just that the voltage spike is still extremely inconsistent and doesn't depend on the time of day or directly related to another loading facility. So that is still something to think about if you're having a random overvoltage trip is it may be still something related to events on the line side of the drive. Uh, another situation which I have seen a couple times, uh, warm belts or mechanical hardware. As I mentioned a previous slide on the load side, if the VFD is running a load and all of a sudden the motor overspins because there's more torque in the motor and all of a sudden the load goes away, the motor turns into a generator briefly. Well, if you have a worn out belt, for example, on a fan application or maybe you have some gears and sprockets, are worn down and also maybe a chain is slipping. All of a sudden what happens is the loads out, VFD builds up all this load and also when the load breaks free or the chain slips, the motor spins faster than the VFD wants it to and you can get the VFD to trip out an overvoltage fault. Another scenario is EMC screws. If you have a potential for a high resistive or floating ground power supply network in your facility, you wanna uh, make sure that these screws are set correctly. These can backfeed into the DC bus. Some EMC screws are set up, connected to the DC bus on certain drives. So we need to look at that. And also maybe you have a chattering uh, digital input. I mentioned maybe you get an overvoltage fault previously when the drive gets a fresh run command. 
Well, maybe the drive's humming along and all of a sudden a, a, a run command input starts chattering. Maybe a safety input starts chattering. Every time the VFD sees this input removed, it stops running the drive and then when it reapplies it, you're getting in effect a fresh run command on the drive, which could cause a VFD to trip out an over voltage fault if the start method isn't set up correctly. So what are solutions for each of these diagnosis situations? Well, for the first one, voltage spikes, as previously discussed earlier in the presentation, you could look at an AC reactor, or maybe a surge suppression device, or maybe a combination of both to help suppress any incoming voltage spikes. If you have worn out belts or mechanical hardware, replace that. Verify the EMC screws in the VFD are set correctly for the type of power supply network that is within your facility. And if you have potential for a chattering digital input, resolve that. Maybe look at a universal power supply if you have power quality issues on the low voltage side controlling your uh, digital inputs. In summary of what could be causing your overvoltage trip on your drive, what have we learned here? Well, if you have multiple drives that are being affected at the same time, or the event is always occurring at the same time every day, the overvoltage trip is coming from the line side of the drive in this scenario. If the overvoltage event is occurring at the same point, now let's say example, a process application, then the, the trip is coming from the motor side or the load side of the drive. And if you have completely random trips, you're not necessarily sure where it's coming from, they could be coming obviously from the line or the load side of the drive. I recommend to you to reach out to your local ABB drive representatives, VFD specialist, and they can help you troubleshoot the cause of your VFD tripping out in overvoltage and help you implement the best solution to resolve the issue as quickly as possible.